Nam 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 Hello everyone, Reefer Gill here. Today we're going to talk about fighting back green hair allergy or GHA. We're going to cover the reasons why I believe I had a green hair allergy breakout and what I did to fend it off. If you're just tuning in, this is a 100 gallon display which has recently finished cycling about two months ago. This is when my green hair allergy issues started to show up. Green hair allergy can quickly overtake your system and become harmful to your fish and livestock. It is also one of the biggest reasons people who are new to the hobby will quit the hobby altogether. In other cases, it's common to see reefers tear down the rock work and treat the rocks in one form or another. Green hair allergy is a major nuisance, looks ugly, and will infest your aquarium rather quickly. The rocks in my display were bleached after I broke down my previous system. After being bleached, I cooked the rocks for several months in warm salt water with a lid to prevent light from getting into them. During the cooking process, I constantly tested the water for phosphates and nitrates and did large water changes as needed. Eventually, these rocks had zero phosphates and nitrates in the water. The reason I mention this is because oftentimes phosphate issues occur as a result of poorly cured live rock. My rock was not an issue for the algae breakout I had. In many cases, the culprit to algae issues in a new tank is live rock. Using live rock has its benefits and drawbacks. The main drawback is phosphate issues and algae blooms. I'm confident this was not the case with my outbreak. Green hair algae needs a few things to survive to include proper water temperature, elevated nutrients in the forms of phosphates and nitrates, and it needs light. It's very important you do your best to try to figure out what the underlying issue is that caused the outbreak in the first place. By eliminating the cause of the outbreak from the start will increase your chances of winning the battle quicker and prevent it from returning. Because I'm taking my time with this new build and I'm not in any rush to introduce expensive corals into this tank, I only have a pair of clownfish and an anemone in the display. Once you know you have a green hair allergy issue, I would recommend that you do not introduce any more fish or coral into your system. Adding more fish will add pollution into your water column from the new fish's waste and contribute to the nutrient food supply the green hair algae needs. Other than that, I can fight the algae issues using more aggressive tactics since I don't have to worry about any SPS corals. With that said, a lot of what I did to bring the algae down to its knees can be done if you happen to have corals in your tank, it just might take you a little bit longer. So what caused the green hair algae to explode in my tank? During the aquarium cycle, I was ghost feeding the tank to keep the little bacteria content and give them enough energy to make babies. Except, I wasn't hand feeding the tank like I should have been. Instead, I was using the automated AFS feeder to do the work for me. The AFS feeder was turned off unless I wanted to ghost feed the tank. Once a week, I would manually flip the switch on my Apex Fusion to feed the tank some Elos pellets. The feeder made one rotation and then went back in. Then I would flip the switch and turn the feeder off. Well, one weekend, instead of flipping the switch off, I set it to auto by mistake. The AFS fed the tank for an entire week, once a day, while no one was home. It wasn't until the next weekend when I went to Fusion Dashboard to flip the switch for the weekly feeding when I saw that it had been an auto for the entire week. I checked the tank and I remember noticing some pellets in the sand bed. Mind you, this was during the cycle, so I didn't even have any cleanup crew members in the tank. It goes without saying that I stopped the whole ghost feeding regimen at this point. I've never ghost fed any of my previous tanks in the past. For whatever reason, I decided to try it out on this build. Needless to say, I made a big mistake here. I just didn't know it yet. After this tank finished cycling in a record 12 days, I did my first large water change and siphoned out the sand for the first time. I was in no rush to turn on the lights. This tank cycled with the lights off and they remained off. Well, they remained off until I purchased some Chato and introduced that into the refugium. The refugium light I'm using is a Kessel H380. For the first time, I turned on the Kessel and lit up the Chato. I ran the Kessel for about 8 hours at night while the lights in the main display remained off. Within a few days, I started noticing a few strands of hair allergy in the refugium. I didn't pay much attention to this, but this should have been my wake-up call. Now I know as you're watching this video, things are looking pretty obvious, but keep in mind, by this point, the whole overfeeding the aquarium was completely blocked out of my mind. As far as I was concerned, it was going to be smooth sailing moving forward. Within the refugium, I also had Marine Pure Bio Blocks. Now if you haven't used them before, they are very messy and crumble easily. Their purpose is to add housing to nitrifying bacteria to populate in. 
A couple of weeks later, I introduced my two clownfish and a rose bubble tip anemone into the display tank. Because I now had an anemone, I kicked on the Radeon LED lights to about 40% intensity at its highest point of the day. The entire light cycle in the display was about 10 hours long. A few days went by and my wife opened the stands door while I was out of town. She sent me some pictures and it was at this point that I started putting the whole picture together. The stalks of the algae were probably 14 inches long if not longer. This stuff was growing off my marine pure bio block, heater, and the sides of my refugium. It was everywhere to include entangled within the chato itself. Now I know the chato was clean when I put it into the refugium. I purchased it from Algae Barn as a small ball and didn't have anything on it. Because I was out of town, my wife now had to intervene. Reluctantly, she stuck her hand into the refugium and started harvesting the green hair algae. Now how many of your spouses would do this? She cleaned it out as best as she could. I immediately jumped onto Apex Fusion and cut down the lights in the display from 10 hours to only about 4 hours and lowered the intensity to about 30% max. I also cut down the length of time the Kessel would be on in the refugium to only 3 hours at night. When I got home about a week later, I realized the damage was already done. Despite having done a large water change, the nutrients were still in the tank and all they needed was the last piece of the puzzle to grow. Light. And with the Kessel H380, the Radeon G4s, they got plenty of it. It goes without saying, my rocks in the main display were now covered with green hair algae to include in the sand bed. The stalks were nowhere near as tall as the outbreak in the refugium, but they could easily get there in the display. If it wasn't for my anemone, this fight could have been easier by going lights off along with other intervention tactics. But like I said, the anemone was in the tank and wasn't going to go anywhere unless I broke down the rock structure, which wasn't an option yet. I removed all my bio blocks from the refugium. Their pore surface was perfect for algae to take a foothold. Besides that, these blocks were just too messy for my liking, so out they went. I examined the algae barn chato and decided to toss that too. The green hair wove its way into it, but dang, this chato grew super fast in the short time I had it. Out it went too. I used one of these Mr. Clean magic erasure sponges and cleaned out the entire refugium of any lingering green hair on the sides of the acrylic. I went to my local fish store and stocked up on cleanup crew members specifically for chowing down on green hair algae and being able to eat any food that's left behind on the rock or in the sand bed. Those members included 4 sea hares, 5 urchins, 10 trochus snails, 12 nasaria snails which are great for the sand bed as they bury themselves in it, a fighting conch, 2 skunk shrimp, and 1 fire shrimp. I placed one of the sea hairs inside the refugium to keep any newly growing algae at bay and everything else went into the display. A quick word of caution, sea hairs are great for cleaning up algae but if they die in your tank and you don't catch it in time, they will further pollute your water and exacerbate your issue. They go into your rock work and bury themselves in the sand so pay close attention to them if you choose to use them. Once there's no more algae, they will die quickly so remove them once they've accomplished their tasks. In addition to the cleanup crew, I also shut off the right radion light since I didn't have any need for it on the right side of the tank. As for the left radion, I left this on at 30% maximum intensity for only 4 hours a day to provide the anemone with some light to live off of. I started doing aggressive water changes to remove excess nutrients feeding the algae. I was doing at least 20 gallons twice a week, sometimes more. I was so thankful that I had planned out my water changing system for this display because it made changing water a breeze. I did consider buying a cheaper salt mix like Instant Ocean to save some money on the amount of salt mix I was using up, but in the end I stuck with Aqua Vitro Salt. I reintroduced a small ball of clean chato into the refugium as yet another way to export the excess nutrients in the tank. I only ran the light for about 3 hours a night and manually cleaned out any new green hair starting to grow in the refugium. As for the rocks in the display, it seemed like my cleanup crew members were having a tough time with the longer strands of algae. So I used a brush and brushed off most of the algae while having my pumps on full power to push out the algae and into the overflow which eventually went down into the filter socks below. The next day I noticed a huge difference in the progress the urchins were making on the algae. You can literally see the area where the urchin ate away at the algae on this rock. Although my test kits were reading zero nitrates and zero phosphates, I knew they were in fact present. It's common for both to read zero when fighting green hair algae because the nutrients that are in the tank are bonded with the algae and not in your water column. My assault on the algae included bringing the BRS dual reactor online and running both GFO and carbon. Any phosphate in the water column would hopefully be knocked out with my GFO. I changed out the GFO and carbon every two weeks. 
I adjusted my skimmer to run wet. This would further assist in exporting nutrients the algae craved. Every other day I would have to empty out the amber colored skim mate from my skimmer's collection cup. And yes, I dumped the skim mate in the toilet because apparently it's gross to dump it in the sink where your dishes are. Who knew? I also programmed the gyre circulation pumps to be on full power for 30 minutes every night. This would pick up any detritus in the tank and shoot it down the overflow and into the filter socks down below. Speaking of filter socks, I stayed on top of these and changed them out every two days whether they were dirty or not. I wanted to stay ahead of the game so having clean filter socks was important. Finally, I cut down on the feeding dramatically. I only fed what I knew the clownfish and the shrimp would consume. I would feed small chunks of frozen food to the tank every two days. It took some two and a half months, but it looks like I'm out of the woods and in the clear. Dare I declare victory on the fight against green hair algae? You can see the rocks are spotless, as is the refugium. On occasion, I still do find strands of green hair algae growing in the refugium, which I immediately remove by hand. I know some of you are wondering why I just don't let it grow in the refugium, which then in turn will likely keep it out of the display. My answer is pretty simple. This is a display refugium as much as my tank is a display aquarium. I want to keep it as clean as possible to include being free of any nuisance algae. I know I covered a whole lot in this video, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscription button. Follow me on Instagram for real-time updates. The link to that is down below in the description. And don't forget to hit that like button. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next Sunday.